Okay, so since I've been uh, tinkering with the Logan lathe, one of the big requests has been, uh, you know, getting to see it in action. So I was kind of sitting around thinking what I might do for a project on the lathe. And then it dawned on me, one of the things I'm missing is, I'll show you that after a bit, a thread dial. So, <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can uh, machine slash fabricate one of these for the Logan. Um, based off of a few of these uh, pictures that I've been able to find online, I've been able to kind of scale off approximately what's some or most of these dimensions are. Um, let's see, this guy here, he actually had the overall length listed at uh, three and a half inches and uh, 16 teeth for the, for the gear that engages with the lead screw. So I'm going to kind of run with that and Based off of the pictures that came off of this website, I have one of these knobs. So I was able to take the dimensions off of the knob I have and scale up or scale off of that to get other dimensions that I you know, didn't have otherwise. So this is the mess that I've come up with since then. Um, I've got a piece of inch and a half, 12L14, I think it is, chucked up in the lathe right now that was donated to me by Kimber Zellick. So I think that's the perfect material to use for this project. Um, I spent a little bit of time before I started this video getting the chuck centered up pretty well. So it's only running out about two thousandths of an inch right now. So what I plan to do to start off with is I want to bore, well, drill the quarter inch hole all the way through this thing to start with. So I'm going to face off the end that I've got uh, set up right now um, and then start using some of Joe Pazinski's uh, tactics for, well, deep boring, if you will, or deep drilling. And I'm going to go halfway in from one side, flip it, face off the other end, and go halfway in from the other side. So I know these, you know, this just looks like a bunch of chicken scratching, but I think considering uh, how rudimentary my approach is, I think this is going to get me through. So I'm going to pause the video and get myself um, geared up uh, to start working on the Logan. Okay, so one more thing I want to point out real quick is this micrometer depth stop or micrometer carriage stop. I believe this thing actually came with the Hindi lathe, but some of the information I found online is suggesting that maybe this came from an 850 Logan. So I... Last night I made this little uh, lower bracket or clamp, whatever you want to call it, to actually attach it onto the Logan lathe. And I think we're going to probably put it to use at some point on this project when I start to um, bore out the, the cavities that are going to take the, the dial and the gear. So <clears throat> this will also kind of come in handy. Um, let's see, I don't think, I'm probably not going to have any call for using the auto feed on this particular project, which I'm sure is what everybody kind of wanted to see, but this is at least the first time that this lathe has been fired up in, 
gosh, I don't know how many months now. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start facing the end of this off and then uh, get set up to drill. Oh boy, how do I even run this thing anymore? this angle just a little bit first and I need a bigger wrench <clears throat> yeah you can tell it's been a while since I've used this machine so there that should work all right here goes nothing It's going to take me a little while to get used to having these uh, this extra handle down here. All right, so the Joe Pazinski way kind of was basically, or at least one of the Joe Pazinski ways that I'd gotten it from him. Start out with a small drill bit and or a um, short drill bit, and then work yourself work your way longer. So. Right now I've just got my, um, oh, pilot drill, centering drill. Shit, I don't even know what you call it anymore. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to start out with that, and then I'm going to go through it with a jobber length bit halfway through, and then flip the material and start the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> I might wind up wind up a little bit off in the center, but I'm not too worried about that as long as I have as long as I'm pretty well concentric on the outer ends, I think I'll be okay for what I'm gonna do. If I need to, I'll try to get into the center with a, a long, deep boring bar. Okay. Wherever I've got it, and just kind of open up the center a little bit as needed. But for right now.
Okay. I think that's almost as deep as I dare to go with this centering bit. It was getting to the point where material was not ejecting very well, so move on to the jobber. That's got the good start of a hole there. And I've got a brand spanking new unused jobber drill bit, so hopefully it'll cut fairly evenly on both sides. Of course, that's never really the case for me, but we shall see. Anyways, I'm just going to let this go for a couple minutes and then I'll pause the camera and, you know, do my normal thing. Heck, this is drilling so quickly, maybe I'll just, maybe I won't pause the camera after all. since it's slowed up a little bit. You guys pretty well get the idea. I'm gonna continue drilling and then I'll bring you guys back when I flip this around to the other side. Okay, I pretty well bottomed out the drill bit on that side. So, we're gonna flip her over here and start it on this side. Now this, I'm going to have to face off quite a bit of material to uh, get it down to where it's flush again. Hopefully that won't take too long. And then there again, I'll probably just pause the camera after a minute or so. Because there's just no point in showing you that. And then I'll bring you back when I start to um, start in with the spot drill, center drill, whatever you want to call it. Thingamabobber. Bring you guys back in a minute. Okay, I got this side faced off now. Bring this in and start uh, drilling from this end.
Okay, switch to the jobber. I'm going to go ahead and pause this again and I'll bring you back when I've when I've gotten through to the other side and kind of give you the rundown of how it turned out or how it didn't turn out. Okay, so it feels like I broke through pretty concentrically to the other side. Um, I know that doesn't really amount to a whole lot, but here's a uh, rod that feels like it's pretty near quarter of an inch. And it goes through with only the tiniest amount of resistance in the center. So I think for the rod that this thing's going to drive, I think that's going to be plenty good. Um, I need to figure out next what my next step is going to be. Uh, I suspect, I'm thinking what's probably going to have to happen next is I'm going to need to bore or counter bore both ends of this, this to, well, one for the diameter of the gear, the other one for the, in, for the diameter of the dial. Um, as for the gear, that I still need to figure out uh, precisely yet so I don't have anything set up to cut a real gear so I'm going to try to implement something along the lines of what uh, Winky did when he built his uh, dial thread dial um, if I remember correctly he wound up using a um, Oh, a slitting saw. So I'm contemplating that I'm going to probably do something very similar to that. Uh, but I need to sit down and think that through a little bit more carefully. So this is probably going to be the end of part one on this. And I think the next part is probably going to be making the 16 tooth gear. If for no other reason than... Well, one, I like using the mill anyways, and two, I need to know the finished dimensions of it so that I can get this board out correctly. So anyways, I will catch up with you guys later.